Hey friends, welcome back to the cabin. Today, we're outside canning Mississippi pink eye purple hull peas. Well, we were blessed with the opportunity to actually go and glean a neighbor's pea field of purple hole peas. And so we got quite a good mess from that. So I love to can peas. I like to diversify my food storage, put some things in the freezer, and also have some for uh, an emergency or if the power goes down or just have them already cooked and ready to open and use for a meal. So I wanted to talk to you just a, a minute about canner safety. Now this is a lid from an all-American canner. It does not have a rubber gasket. It's actually metal on metal seal, but you'll see the vent pipe right here. One thing that you want to be sure of is that that vent pipe is always clear and also it has a pop-off valve right here. You want to make sure that that's in place. If you buy a used one, I would encourage you maybe to buy a replacement one, if, especially if it's an older canner. And also you can take your canner to your local extension office and they will test your pressure gauge because you want that to be accurate. So what I've got going on in my canner right now is I've got a quart and a half of water heating in there and I've got five pint jars that are half filled with water and I'll actually do two more and show you how I do that but what we're doing is we're we're heating slash sterilizing the jars. Now when you pressure can the sterilization is not quite so important because the temperature range when you pressure can is going to sterilize but you still want very clean jars and you want them hot. So what I have here is I, I took water from a teapot because it's hot and put in here because this water is already hot so I don't want to put a cold jar with cold water in there because it will bust the jars. And I'm going to set these down in there. This one the same thing that's very hot water that's in there. This is actually called a Logan, Longen Burger jar. I love these jars. I actually found two of them at a thrift store for like 25 cents a piece and they're just beautiful. I've used them over and over. So now I have all my jars in there. They're going to heat up and I'm going to get everything else ready to start putting peas in them and let's get started canning. What we're going to do is we're going to take a jar out. Now the jars are half full with the hot water so I'm going to carefully pour that hot water back into my canner because I've got about a quart and a half in there but I need about three quarts to can with. You, you do not have to add salt, but if you do want to add salt, it's recommended a half a teaspoon per pint. These peas have been rinsed very well. If you find a bad one, just toss it out there. The chickens will find it or something will find it. Okay, so we're going to just pack them in kind of loosely. And we want to go to just about the shoulder of the jar. Now you see why you want your jars hot. You're putting hot water. This is actually boiling water. You want one inch of head space. We're going to debubble. And when you debubble, don't just do a little bit. Let's get in there and let's get the air out. You don't want air. Let's stir it around, go outside. You want to go inside. You see, you can see the bubbles moving up. Okay, and if you look on the spoon, right here where it's flat and then goes to the rounded end, that's about an inch. So I use that to kind of gauge one inch of headspace. So that's pretty close. I guess that's pretty close right there. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our rag. Dip it in some vinegar and we're going to wipe the rim because we don't want anything to compromise the seal plus we're checking for nicks and cracks that we may have missed before we're going to take our wand that water is pretty warm 
we're going to set it right there like that and you can tell because that rubber is soft that it really will seat on there very well this is something very important when you do your rings you don't want to go over finger tight okay so you want to feel the resistance then finger tight is usually three fingers not all your hand three fingers that's pretty hot and you just want to snug it up you don't want to crank down on it one of the signs that you've put them on too tight is the top of the lid will be buckled when you're through canning Okay, so I've got my jars in my canner and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and place the lid on it. Everything's lubricated here. And what you want to do, you have an arrow on your lid. Now this is the American canner. Any canner will have some line up on it that you can line your lid up so it's on there correctly. So we have an arrow here and we also have an indention here. So that's what we're going to line up. just like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put our toggles on here. You're going to work opposites. Okay, so we're going to just put this one on. I'm not going to snug it down yet until I go to the opposite side. And what we're trying to do is to put the lid on evenly as level as possible. So we're going to back this one off just a tad. Tighten this one. All right, that looks good. Okay, so we're going to do opposites. Same thing here. That looks pretty good. Once you get them on, then you'll go around all the way around and tighten them just a tad. Okay, so they're on there good and snug. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to turn up the heat just a little bit. What we're looking for is steam to be coming out of this vent hole, but now there's actually some steam coming out there now. But we're looking for a very visible, forceful steam. What we're actually doing is we're forcing air out of the canner and we're actually filling it with the moist steam. So I'm going to turn it up and as soon as it reaches that full force steam, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, I hope you can hear it. I'm not sure that you can see it, but that is a very forceful steam coming out of there. So I'm going to start timing it and let it do that for 10 minutes. And like I said before, what we're doing is we're forcing air out of the canner because a pressure canner is a type of vacuum canner. So we're forcing the air out of there. And then after 10 minutes, I will actually place my weight 
on that vent, you also see why it's very important that that vent be clear and not clogged with anything. It's been 10 minutes and I just placed my weight on there. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it build to 10 pounds and it already had about four pounds pressure when I dropped the weight on that. So we're already about eight pounds pressure and hadn't been on there very long. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the flame down on this. Once it starts rocking, you don't want a continuous rocking. If it's continually releasing steam and rocking and not settling down from time to time, then you have your flame too high. But we're gonna let it start rocking and rock for a few seconds, make sure we're where we need to be, and then I'll, I may need to adjust, adjust my flame down some more. It should start rocking because we just hit about 10 pounds. There we go. Okay. So we're going to let it rock pretty steady for just a little bit and then I'm going to adjust that flame down if I need to. You want it to rock, pause a few seconds, rock, pause a few seconds. Okay, that's perfect. We rocked a while, now we're taking a pause. So I'll be back with you when the 40 minutes is up and we'll discuss what the next steps are. Now that our processing time is complete, I'm simply going to turn the burner off and allow the pressure to drop to zero on its own. And I'll be back with you in just a bit and I'll show you the next steps. Well, you can probably tell that I'm not outside right now. And what happened was, is we had one of those heat generated afternoon thunderstorms roll in so we had to get everything in the house as quick as possible and let uh, let my canner finish cooling down and depressurizing and that's where we are now so uh, we'll just pick up where we left off outside so where what I'm doing now is I'm gonna go ahead and pull this weight off and you can see that there is very little very little steam probably not even enough for you to hear it so we're good so I'm going to show you something that you need to do Ooh, you can hear the thunder that you'll need to do whenever you open your canner okay so we are going to do just like we did before we're going to loosen these up opposite sides okay so we've got opposite sides going here I'm not going to completely take the lid off to start with. I'm actually going to pick it up and I'm going to prop it up right there on the lugs that lock it off and I'm going to let it sit that way for about 10 minutes and what we're doing is we're just easing the temperature change inside and outside so that we don't bust our jars. So I am going to lift this lid away from me and set it in the sink. Okay, I can smell the peas. They smell wonderful. So it doesn't hurt to let them sit this way for a few minutes as well because it's just even more of the temperature regulation where your inside and outside is, is becoming the same. I've been hearing some popping, so they're probably already sealed. Let's take a look. Oh my goodness, those are some pretty jars. Looks like we did lose a little bit of liquid. Not much though. And that's not uncommon. That's my favorite jar right there. The Longenberger. Okay, so there are those beautiful jars. Now, I had started out with seven jars, but I lost a jar. It was before I had filled it with peas and actually didn't have enough quite for seven pints, had enough left over for us to cook for supper. But when I had put water in one of them to set in there, 
it was warm but it wasn't hot enough to set in my canner when I was heating everything up because my canner had already gotten pretty hot and I set it in there and it actually cracked the bottom so that was a fail and I was I was trying to illustrate a point and kind of uh, didn't follow my own rules and I lost a jar but the good thing was it was an empty jar not a jar full of peas so I'm gonna let them sit for 24 hours I'm not gonna take the rings off during that 24 hours after 24 hours I, I will remove the rings and I will rinse these jars down with cool water to get any residue off the outside dry them really well date them and put them on the on my pantry shelf but I'm gonna date them but I promise you they won't last long enough for me to worry about it because my family loves for me to be able to go pop a, can a jar of these open, put them in the pot and warm them with a little bit of seasoning and we have instant Mississippi pink eyed purple hole peas. I hope that you enjoyed this video and you find some things that you can use and you go out and you try canning for yourself. I think it's a very rewarding thing as well as a very useful skill to have these days. I had a blast doing this video I, even out in this hot Mississippi heat. It was, it was fun and that's one of the things I really enjoy doing is to can food and preserve food. So I want to leave you though with some very beautiful words. Don't ever forget that your Heavenly Father loves you. And I'll see you on the next video. God bless.